Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, WooClap open uh, training session. Wood training session open uh, to, to all. Uh, I'm going to wait another few minutes just to, to give people a bit of time to, to connect to the event. And uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be getting started shortly. Looking through, looking through uh, the participants, I see some, uh, some names that I recognize, some of, some of my partners. And WTC is there. It's lovely. Sheffield, I see as well. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, and again, we'll be starting uh, in just a couple of minutes. Repeat myself, but for those that just arrived, we're just waiting a couple of minutes to, to then leave a bit of time to people to, to connect. Maybe some people are coming from uh, other classes, uh, just rushing to this. So let me give them a few minutes to get installed, and then uh, we can get started in just a second. Perfect. Well, I think uh, I think that we can get started, and maybe some people will join us uh, as we get through the, the presentation today, the training session. Okay. So yeah. Again, uh, hi everyone, and welcome to this uh, WooClap training session. I'm happy to to be here with you today to really look into a tool that's going to help you hopefully revitalize uh, classes and really put interaction uh, at the heart of your pedagogy. Um, and uh, my name is Kieran Farrell. Uh, I'm customer success manager at WooClap. Uh, some of you that signed up might have uh, already seen me. I think I've given some training sessions in the different institutions, so maybe some people have already seen me. Uh, and my role is to accompany institutions uh, really throughout the world to uh, deploy WooClap and uh, make sure that they can uh, successfully use, uh, use the tool and uh, have it be a part of uh, their, their new teaching methods. So today I'm joined by uh, my colleagues, uh, Jusla, and uh, Christopher, uh, they'll be here. Uh, they'll be here to help you uh, throughout the presentation to answer any of your questions. Uh, and uh, the outline of today's session: uh, first, we're briefly going to go into some context uh, on WooClap. Uh, why WooClap? Uh, why and how can WooClap change uh, the teaching and learning experience? And uh, after that, of course, I'll be giving you the opportunity to experience the tool from uh, the participants' end before showing you how you can uh, then create your own content and how you can incorporate that into your uh, next uh, presentations, classes. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, of course, we'll finish the session with a quick uh, Q&A uh, session. Uh, but as I said, um, you can ask your questions throughout the presentation. Uh, and I'd like to remind you to just uh, please ask your questions in the dedicated uh, tab. So you can see that beside uh, the chat, uh, there is a questions tab. Uh, it'll be easier for us to answer your questions directly there. Uh, so yeah, if you just keep that in mind uh, to, to ask your questions there, you can also use the chat just for a general interaction then. And uh, we'll also uh, email you uh, at the end with a replay of this session. So if you can't stay for the session, uh, don't be worried. Uh, there, uh, don't worry, there'll be a, there'll be a replay sent to, to, sent to your email address. Okay. So now to, to get into a bit of a, a bit of context uh, about WooClap. Uh, WooClap is really first and foremost a pedagogical tool that was founded on uh, cognitive science research from the last decade in order to really rethink the way that we learn. So amongst this research that I mentioned uh, is um, the theory of French neuroscientist Stanislas Dehaene, 
who identifies uh, four fundamental pillars of learning, uh, which are the following. First, uh, attention. So in order to learn, we need to be 100% focused. Of course, distractions are going to take away from our focus and have uh, ultimately a negative impact on our learning. So this really brings us to the question of how do I captivate my students' attention, my audience's attention, but also how do I hold on to it and maintain my audience's focus? Uh, the second pillar is uh, active engagement. So in order to remember new content, uh, it isn't enough to passively listen to the person presenting. Uh, it's, uh, it's better to emit your own hypotheses and experiment in order to fully understand new notions and terms. Uh, the third pillar is feedback. So of course, uh, feedback allows you to assess your learning uh, if and where you made a mistake. And we also know that it has the most impact when it comes directly after the input was given. And finally, the fourth and last pillar uh, is consolidation. So in order to learn, one must review content. So we're gonna see how Google Lab can be a really valuable tool before, during, and after presentations. Now, the WooClap founders realized uh, that it was complicated for teachers to measure uh, real-time student understanding and engage their students. So this is why we came up with a, with a tool that really helps you um, collect data from your audience, not only one student uh, at a time, but you can really collect that data from the whole group. Uh, it allows you to then comment on all of that data that you're, uh, you're collecting live. Uh, which, you know, of course, helps you un measure the understanding of the group. Uh, and of course, one of the values of having a digital tool is that all of that data that you're collecting can ultimately be turned into insights. Uh, so after you can go into the reports, uh, you can have insights into the understanding of a student on an individual level or on the un understanding of the group. Uh, you know, if you see some trends from different classes uh, where students are maybe struggling with this term, uh, you can also readapt the way that you teach it. So all that data is really gonna, gonna help you sort of personalize the teaching experience and the learning experience for students. Uh, now I think that's a, there's only so much you can hear about it. And I think that the best way to understand uh, what the value of the tool is, is for you to act as participants and uh, see what it's like to, uh, to use uh, WooClap as a participant. So uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Jocelyn, has just uh, shared a link in uh, the chat. So if you click on that link, you can then connect to, uh, to this event. And uh, you can also feel free to scan the QR code on your phone if you wish to participate that way. So this is the way that I can get my audience to, uh, to participate uh, just by inserting this slide into my presentation, uh, sharing the link or asking my students or audience uh, to scan the QR code. So as you can see at the bottom of my screen, I know I have 20 people connected uh, to my event. And you can see it on the, the bottom right corner. So once, uh, once I know that everyone is, uh, is connected, then I can move on to my uh, interactive content. I see 27 people uh, connected, which is about what we have uh, on our event. So once I'm comfortable with that number, now I can move on to my first interactive question. Where are you located uh, on this map? I know we have a bit of an international group here. It's the open training sessions in English. We usually get uh, people from, uh, from Europe, uh, maybe the United States, uh, South Africa, I can see. Perfect, looks like Portugal. Middle East, perfect, great, thank you all for your answers. Again, as you can see at the bottom of my screen, I know that I have 11 or 12, 13 answers out of 29 people connected to my event. And uh, of course, as you can see, as I'm collecting that data, uh, it's all appearing live uh, in my presentation. So that really gives me the possibility to then be able to, to comment on it live. Uh, and it really is putting that interaction at the heart of, uh, of my class. Still waiting for uh, some answers. I see 14 answers. At least 15. And then whenever uh, I'm comfortable with the amount of answers uh, that I've collected, then I can move on to my next interactive question. 
which is describe your experience working from home in one word. So this is just an open question that I thought I'd ask, uh, just to give you an idea of how it can help you interact uh, with a, a large group of people. So um, when you're asking this question, typically in class, you would have to call on a, a student uh, individually. Uh, the big value of having, uh, having a word cloud question uh, for open questions is that it's gonna reflect different trends in answers that I'm collecting. So here I know the word fun came in multiple times, multiple times, interesting came in multiple times. So as the word gets bigger, it's reflecting the trend in the answers that I'm collecting. And it's really, you know, I'm able to then, uh, to then comment on all of it live. It looks like mostly, uh, mostly there's a positive feedback from, from you, uh, sad for one person. So, and uh, as you can see here, I have different uh, display options on the left-hand side. So I can decide to display uh, my answers in the form of a grid, as you can see here, uh, in the form of a list, where I can click on one to bring it to the attention of the group. And then I can go back to my word cloud. And uh, if I don't want it moving around so much, I can also lock in the answers uh, to keep people from participating. But just, yeah, one uh, interesting use of, uh, of, of open questions. Uh, I think the word cloud is very much appreciated by a lot of, uh, a lot of users. And finally, uh, I thought I'd just ask you a, a quick polling question to get an idea of uh, what my audience's level is uh, on the use of uh, WooClap. Obviously, this is a beginner's training session, so most of you have probably never used it. Uh, maybe this is my colleagues uh, answering at the top that have used it as presenters. Thank you all. So as you can see again, uh, as I'm collecting all of that data, it's appearing live. And again, I know I have 17 answers out of 30 people connected. And then whenever I'm ready, I can move on to my next slides. Perfect. So thank you all for, for your participation. Uh, and um, I just want to remind you of some of some resources that were, are made available to you. I think it's important to be reminded of these when you start using the tool. But we have really a variety of tutorials on our on our YouTube page, educational tips on our blog, and you know any functionalities that you don't understand, buttons that you don't know what how to use or anything. All of that's very thoroughly documented in our help center. So just keep uh, these resources in mind, and they'll be sent to you as well uh, at the end of the training session, uh, just so that you can have a, a good experience when you start using the tool. And uh, before I give you a chance, uh, before I, I show you how to create your own content. Uh, I just want to remind you as well that uh, WooClap also, you know, integrates into your existing work environment. And I think that's a, a big value of the tool as well um, as a, it integrates into your, your LMS, you know, for example, Moodle, Canvas, Blackboard, uh, Brightspace, uh, into PowerPoint, into Microsoft Teams, which means you don't always have to be juggling between multiple tools. You can have a you know, seamless experience of everything in one place. Uh, so if you have any more questions about that, you can ask. Uh, you, know, you can ask uh, in the chat or in, a, in the questions tab, rather. Uh, and it's also quite well documented online. Now I'm going to show you how to create your own content. Let me just check real quick if there are any questions. Looks like so far so good. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So this page that you see here is uh, the page that you arrive on once you've created your WooClap, uh, your WooClap uh, account. Now this will be empty for you if you've just started using it. You won't have uh, uh, all of this, uh, all this mess here. Uh, and the first thing you want to do is go ahead and press on Create Event. So one event is what we consider to be one individual class that you're going to be teaching. And uh, the first step, of course, is to rename your event. Uh, so here, for example, I say I'm teaching a geography class. And uh, I'm just going to put the date in. So I've renamed my event geography class 0911. Now, as you can see, and what really you know pops up, of course, are all the different question types that you can choose from that are here. So there are 17 different question types that you can choose from. You can uh, just uh, go through them. and uh, now, before I start creating my content, I think it's important that I just 
uh, really look into uh, where are the moments where I want to interact with my audience and what are the key uh, elements that I want to maybe evaluate uh, throughout my presentation. So maybe uh, if I'm teaching a class in geography, maybe we're going to talk about uh, GDP and that's a prerequisite to understand the rest. So maybe I just want to pull my students at the beginning of the class to make sure that they understand that notion. So I'm going to go ahead and click on poll here. I'm just going to open this interface. And here I'm going to ask a simple yes or no question. Do you understand the notion of GDP? And if it be a yes or no. So my question at the top, the options that my audience can choose from. Of course, on the right-hand side for each question type, you have different uh, different settings that are available. So I could uh, authorize multiple answers. In this case, it doesn't make sense. And, and I could put a timer on any one of my questions. So once I've created my question and put the, uh, the two options here, all I have to do is press on save. And now you can see that my question appears here. My second question, uh, maybe it's important and a key uh, learning is to know that uh, students understand what the capital of France is. So for that, I'm just gonna ask a multiple choice question. So I'm going to go ahead and click on multiple choice here and ask what is the capital Oops. of France. So again, my question at the top, the different options at the bottom. Is it Paris? Is it London? Or is it Dublin? Uh, as you can see here, again, uh, different settings on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, I can add audio to any one of my questions, and I can add uh, pictures or uh, yeah, that kind of a, to any one of my uh, answers or my questions. And then I'm going to go ahead and press on save. Oh, no, I have to select the correct answer and then press on save. And as you can see now, my question appears here under the first one that we just created. And then finally, I'm going to ask a third question type. Uh, let me go through them. Maybe I'm going to ask a find on image question. And I'm going to ask, where is Colombia located on this map? So my question at the top. And then, of course, this is a find on image question. So I'm going to upload an image that I've previously recorded on my computer. So I'm going to just go get that from the files in my computer. and upload that image directly from my computer. So now you can see I've uploaded a map of South America. And what I need to do now is define a zone in which I consider that all the answers given were correct. So I'm gonna add a zone in the form of a circle and just place that over Columbia here and then press on save. So now we have our free questions that we've just created. So if I want, I can already have my audience participate. So to do that, it's as easy as just copying this link. So this is the unique link to your event. Uh, note that you can also, uh, you can also customize it uh, if you wish to. So I'm gonna just copy this and I'm gonna share it with you in the chat. And now if I want people to participate, I can just display the, the uh, instructions to connect. So that's under the questions connection slide. You can see it here and you press on display. So now my students can either uh, click on the link that I've shared or they can also uh, scan the QR code. So I've put it in the uh, in the chat. Don't hesitate to, to connect. And again, as you can see, I can see I have three, four, five people connected uh, to my event. So just to show you, uh, just to show you how easy it is to uh, to create. Uh, once again, just new event, rename my event, create my questions, and then I just need to press on uh, display beside the connection slide, and I can already go into my interactive questions, as you can see here. Perfect. Thank you all for, uh, for connecting and for your participation. 
uh, and you have an other chance to participate later, so I won't uh, spend too much time on this, but I just wanted to show you uh, what is the first way of having people uh, connect to the event. Perfect. So now we saw how we could already, you know, create those questions, display, uh, display the instructions and uh, have people connect. Um, but of course, as you saw at the beginning of my presentation, uh, I had inserted questions directly into my content, into my presentation. And I think that's a, it's a great way of, uh, of doing it where you can alternate between your slides and your interactive uh, questions and your interaction moments with your students. So to do that, I'm gonna click on add presentation here. And here I'm gonna come and uh, import a presentation from my computer. So this can be a PDF, PowerPoint, uh, Keynote. You can also use this on Google Slides. So here I'm gonna import a PowerPoint presentation that I have on my computer. And as you can see, it's opening this sidebar with uh, different features uh, that we're gonna to explore together today. So now you can see uh, my presentation has been uploaded. Now, one thing to keep in mind uh, that's important is that uh, when we import a presentation into WooClap, uh, it will be imported in a PDF format, which means that it's a static format and any transitions that you might've created on uh, PowerPoint won't be supported on uh, the WooClap website. Uh, you know, if you really want to keep those transitions that you've created in PowerPoint and present from there, uh, it is possible to install uh, WooClap as a add-in in PowerPoint uh, I won't get into that too much today, but uh, that, that is a possibility, even though we do recommend using it on WooClap uh, on the website, uh, because the user experience is just that much more uh, friendly. So now, as you can see, my presentation has been uploaded and underneath it, there's this insert questions button. So when I click on this button here, it's going to open a new interface. So this video uh, pops up to accompany you next time and showing you how to answer your questions. Uh, I'm going to replace this video for today. And as you can see, I have all of my slides on the left-hand side here. And on the right-hand side, we have all the, quest the questions that we've just created together. So then if I want my students to uh, participate after the introduction and before uh, the GDP slide, I'm gonna go ahead and take the instructions, the connection instructions, and I'm just gonna drag and drop them there. And then my question on GDP, drag and drop where I want it to appear in my presentation. Then if I want the question on the capital of France to come in here, I drop it here. And the one on Colombia towards the end, drop it there. So as you can see, I'm taking my questions and really inserting them into like the layout of my presentation. And then all I have to do is press on save. And now uh, when I'm in class, I'm projecting my screen, I'm on WooClap on my event, I've uploaded my presentation and my questions. All I have to do now is press on start directly from the website and I'm projecting this to my group. And then I'm gonna go through my slides as I normally would, uh, just using the arrows. And I'm seamlessly going then from the from uh, the interactive content into the um, into my presentation. As you can see here, you can answer this uh, multiple choice question for those of you uh, that are still uh, connected to the event. And uh, yeah, as you can see again, as I'm receiving the answers that are being displayed live, and as this is a multiple choice question, I can then whenever I'm ready display the correct answer, which will be shown both uh, on my end. Uh, as a presenter on the projected screen, but it'll also be shown uh, to uh, the participants on their end uh, to see if they got a good answer. So as you can see here, I'm the display correct answer. There we go. Perfect, thank you all for your participation. And before I get into the features, I'm just gonna check if there are any questions. Hey, Kevin. Yep. Um, yeah, just uh, one interesting question that we got, but I think that's something that we're gonna look at uh, at the towards the end of the uh, the training session. But it's one regarding the participant pa the participant pace uh, questionnaire. So the question was: in the event, uh, uh, if the event is asynchronous, would the participants be able to view the responses page right after? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, uh, Would you be able to view what after? Sorry, I, I didn't catch the, that. 
to the response the, the responses page right after. Ah, okay, yeah. The responses, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, the the short answer is yes, and uh, I'll get into that maybe uh, later. Yeah, because um, so at the, at the moment, uh, for those of you that might not understand what the uh, participant pace is, but at the moment we're using a uh, we're looking into uses of WooClap in live setting. Uh, but there's also a tab that we'll get into a bit later called participant pace for uh, asynchronous uses of uh, of the tool. And yeah, I'd be happy to, to get into that a bit more uh, a bit more later. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Chris. Perfect. I think there are no other questions at the moment. Uh, okay. Perfect. So now we're going to get into uh, some of these settings that you can see here uh, that really hurt, help you uh, personalize uh, your experience with the tool. So now when I had everyone participate, uh, no form of authentication was, uh, was required. So I had the event uh, as an anon anonymous event where everyone could, uh, could uh, yeah, just freely participate. But if I, uh, if I wish to, I can activate some form of authentication. So if I press on this toggle here, it will open different options that are available to you. You can require students to or participants to uh, connect via email, via social, which is Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, or Microsoft, and via SSO university login. Uh, so that's only if you're a part of, a, if your institution has uh, purchased uh, a campus-wide or a license uh, to, to WooClap. So uh, it doesn't apply to, to everyone. Uh, so yeah, authentication can be great because you do have then in the report function that we'll be looking into uh, that visibility on the understanding of students on an individual level. You can send them reports and we'll be seeing that after as well. Uh, but there's a lot to be said as well for anonymous events. Uh, it can sometimes uh, kind of free speech when people don't feel like they're accountable uh, necessarily for what they say. Uh, that being said, that is also the limit of having uh, anonymous events is that people aren't accountable for, for what they say. So, yeah, so something to keep in mind. Uh, now, under uh, these options is a less formal, let's say, form of authentication that you can require. Uh, here, I can activate participant username. So in this case, uh, if I activate this option, uh, just uh, participants will just have the option to choose their own username to connect uh, to the event. Now, the next button that you can uh, that you can see is results visible by default. So, as you saw while I was presenting, uh, for example, on the question, maybe the multiple choice question, what is the capital of France? You could see the answers come in. So, maybe uh, one of the limitations of having this is that maybe some participants, some students, are going to wait for others to give answers and just choose uh, the answer that was uh, most commonly given. So if I want, I can deactivate this option. And then I keep control over when I display the answers collected. And then I keep control also over when I display the correct answer. So uh, I'll be uh, running the event one more time at the end of all these explanations, and you'll be able to see all of the changes that I've made and uh, how that changes the, the, whole, uh, the whole experience. Now, uh, the next button that you can see here is the I'm confused button. So if I activate this button, I give uh, participants the option on their end, on their interface, to uh, click on a button stating that they're confused. And that's going to appear on my interface as a presenter. So I can take into account that maybe one person, 10 people are confused. Uh, and then maybe I can ex re-explain a certain notion and ask my students, OK, now if you understand better, you press on that button again, and I'll see the number go down. So it's really a way of taking into account people are confused without necessarily interrupting the flow of your presentation. And uh, another way that you can interact with your students uh, through WooClap is through messages. So as you can see under the title here, uh, we've been in the votes tab since the beginning, but there's a messages tab here, just right of it. If I click on this here, I can activate wall likes and images. So this gives the possibility to my participants to send questions. Uh, these aren't private questions between the presenter and uh, the participant, but rather questions that will be displayed on a wall of messages uh, that can be displayed to the whole group. So I've activated that, and uh, you'll be able to see what that looks like in just, a, just an instant. And uh, finally, uh, as you can see here, 
the last button here is competition mode. So if I activate the competition mode, um, uh, if I've activated some form of authentication, this is possible. And uh, it gives me the possibility as a presenter to sort of gamify my course uh, by giving me the possibility to uh, display a podium of the participants that have given the most good answers. Uh, so this is really a way of like um, snapping your, your students back into an active stance, maybe play on their uh, competitive side and uh, yeah, gamify your courses. Uh, I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure it's something uh, a lot of students uh, appreciate. Now, before I reset uh, the event, let me just check if there are any more questions. It looks like my colleagues are on top of it. Perfect. So now, as I've uh, previously uh, collected data on this event and I wanna erase it, what I'm gonna go do is at the bottom here, I'm gonna press on the reset button reset here and go ahead and click on reset. So that's uh, deleted all of the previously uh, previously collected data on my event. So now I'm gonna ask you uh, to participate one last time and we're gonna be able to look at all of the different, um, we'll be able to look at all of the different uh, settings that we've activated or deactivated and we'll be able to see uh, what that looks like. So again, uh, you can either scan the QR code or uh, you can also click on the link that I've shared. So again, uh, now I see I have 10 people connected to my event. Whenever I'm comfortable with the amount of people uh, connected, then I can move on uh, to my interactive content. See 11, I think that's about what we had uh, earlier on. Perfect, and anyone joining after can still click on the link in the chat. Perfect, and I'll move on to my question here. What is the capital of France? So now yeah, keep in mind that we've deactivated the uh, results visible by default, so it's no longer appearing. So of course here I have the information that I've collected eight answers, which I also have here, uh, but students aren't able to base their answer now off the answers of others. Then when I'm ready, maybe 11 out of 13 is all right. And then I can display the results collected here. And then in a second time, display the correct answer. And again, uh, when I press on correct answer, that'll be displayed both on my end uh, as the presenter, but also on the participants interface. And I'll ask my next question, where is Columbia located on this map? Perfect, I see I have 10 answers out of 14 and I can display uh, all the answers collected here and then display the correct answer. Of course, every time I'm also gonna have this little statistic at the bottom of the percentage of correct answers collected on that question. And then uh, I have my last. So in this case, of course, as it's a, it's a polling question, I'm not afraid of students being influenced by the answers of others. So I can just go ahead and click on results so to help display that. So perfect, and now once you've uh, answered all of these questions, maybe we can look into uh, some of the other functionalities that we've uh, activated together. So if you can see the I'm confused button on your end, uh, if you wanna try clicking on that, uh, I see that one person's found it and you can see that as a presenter, I can see that button. Uh, I can see that number go up and down here. I can also reset it if I wish to. And uh, another option, that we activated together was the wall of messages. So if you wanna try sending in a, sending in a message, uh, I can give you a bit of a, I can give you a bit of a tour of what the, uh, the message board looks like. Uh, and as soon as I get a message, uh, it should appear here in the messages tab. Uh, don't hesitate to try uh, even just sending in a uh, test message. I'll take a, this second to drink a bit. And I see that someone has found, two people have found the messages, three people. There's no stopping you now. I'm going to messages. 
Perfect. And I see uh, different messages. Uh, I can click on one if I want to bring it to uh, the attention of the group. So it's 52 degrees in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, now that I'm going to Google what that is in, uh, in Celsius. That's 11 degrees Celsius. So <laughs> I feel for you. That's pretty cold. <laughs> All right. So yeah, as you can see, uh, this is what the, the wall messages looks like. You can also like, like each other's messages. Uh, greetings from Italy, trial, great. So yeah, it's great to thank you all for, for your participation. And now uh, the, last, uh, the last option that we had uh, activated together was the competition mode. And as you can see now, I have a little trophy here. And if I, dis I press on this, I'm gonna display a podium of uh, my top players, let's say, uh, and congratulations to uh, Steve for uh, the first place. Uh, you can see these little differences in points here. Uh, so speed of answer is taken into account just to different differentiate between you know first and second if there are only a few, uh, few questions. So this is my top three, I can display top five, top 10, uh, and so on. So thank you all for uh, your participation. Uh, and I'm gonna check again to see if there are any questions. Uh, otherwise we can go into uh, the report function. Perfect. Okay, so yeah, as I mentioned, uh, sort of throughout the presentation, uh, you know, the real value also of having a digital tool is uh, that you're collecting data and that data is really gonna give you insights uh, into the understanding of students' individual level, but also into the understanding of the whole group. And uh, all of this can be uh, visualized in the report function that you can see here. So if I click on report, open this tab, and as you can see, uh, I have multiple tabs. So in the report tab, I'm going to have a general overview of what uh, answers I collected on each question, so the, of the whole group. But I can then also break it down per participant here. I can select uh, any one of uh, the participants uh, that I want here. So I'm DBS here, and I can see uh, all the answers that they've sent in. And um, if students or participants have authenticated uh, with any any way that has an email, uh, I can send them individual reports by email by just clicking on this button uh, and uh, the system does the rest. The student will then receive uh, basically what would look like this report here of the answer that he gave as well as what the correct answer was. So a great way of giving students feedback on uh, their participation, on their learning, uh, so that they can go over that content to get as well. And then finally, uh, I have a grid uh, where I can have yeah, line per line, this general overview with uh, the percentage uh, at the bottom for each question. So a very valuable feature uh, of the tool. Uh, now, before I go into asynchronous uh, uses of, uh, of WooClap, uh, I'm gonna just check if there are any questions. Looks like there were quite a few, but I think they've been answered. Hey, Kieran, just um, just one thing before yeah, before we go into the participant-based questionnaire. Could you show us again how to select a correct area on a final image question? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so to do that, uh, I would just go into a uh, find on image uh, question, type in my question at the top. And upload my image. So I should just take a word a second. Okay, so my question, I've uploaded the image. And so here, as you can see, there's an add zone, uh, add zone button. So when I click on add zone here, I have two options, either add a zone uh, in the form of a circle in which I consider all answers to be correct or in the form of a rectangle. So here I think uh, as we're gonna add this as a zone, it makes more sense to use a circle. So I'm just gonna click on circle and this will appear. This circle appears, then I'm just gonna drag it to the area and I can just make it larger by using this little toggle here. 
And then I've defined everything in this green area to be considered as a correct answer. Then all I have to do is press and save. Perfect, hope uh, that answers the question. Yeah, thanks. Um, I don't know if you have uh, a little bit more time, but just one thing that's about the whiteboard. Um, could yeah. you show us how to select um, a, a shape and an arrow and show to us how to delete it and remove um, those shapes? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, um, yeah, so this is a, a new functionality. So uh, bear with me if I'm uh, struggling myself. But um, uh, so that the whiteboard is pretty classical. I suppose uh, a lot of you have probably used it in uh, different, uh, different tools or throughout your, your careers. Uh, but I have all of these options of what I can add. I can give also uh, participants the possibility. So here, I'll give you the possibility if you're still connected to the event to add uh, sticky notes if you wish to. And uh, here I should find, I see someone's already uh, found that, uh, different shapes that I, can, that I can choose from. So here I'm gonna take an arrow and uh, I would just go ahead and uh, click and then drag to the shape I want. And then uh, I would uh, select that, uh, one second. <laughs> I'm glad to see that uh, you're still managing. And then uh, to select it, Actually, how do I do that? Oh yeah, so to select it, I just select the zone in which it is, and then I can just delete by using that key on my, uh, by using the delete key on my, uh, on my computer. So I hope that answers. But uh, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and also yeah, keeping in mind that we've uh, just released it, uh, this feature. So you know maybe any uh, functionality kind of bugs or uh, you know the user experience I think will get better as we as we go. But uh, yeah, any feedback you also have regarding it uh, is, uh, is, is greatly appreciated. Uh, so uh, I hope that I can delete this sticky note and there's no longer any uh, trouble deleting. And uh, I can see that uh, some of you are having fun with a uh, massive uh, sticky notes. So good point. Kevin, just one last uh, question for Mary yeah. here. Could you show us again how to integrate uh, or insert um, with lab questions within a PowerPoint presentation, um, just to show us the uh, the steps. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. I was just reading uh, Mary's question at the same time. Perfect. Yeah, thank you for for your question, uh, Mary. Um, so once you've uploaded your presentation, it it appears here, I suppose, and uh, it's just the simple step of just going underneath and pressing on Insert Questions, which then brings you to this interface, and this interface has all of your slides then on the left-hand side and all of the questions that you've previously created on the right-hand side. And then all you have to do is uh, simply take them and drag and drop them where you want them to appear in your presentation. Then uh, you would press on save and you would project this screen and uh, just press on start uh, and you'd be able to go from uh, your slides directly into your interactive content. Hope that answers your uh, question, Mary. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Perfect. Um, okay, so now, so all of these uses that we looked at uh, up till now were uses of WooClap in a uh, live setting. But of course, I can also use WooClap asynchronously, uh, either to gather uh, feedback after a, a training session, maybe, or uh, in my case, that would be it. Uh, or uh, to collect, uh, or maybe uh, to, to have students repeat certain notions that they didn't understand. Maybe you identified uh, some notions that didn't receive many good answers in the report function, and you want to have your students go over that content again. Then uh, what you would want to do is go into the participant paste tab here under the, the title beside the messages tab. And what you can do is create questionnaires and uh, files. So here I'm going to go ahead and create press create and I'm going to call it geography class revision. And here I have the option of either creating a question from scratch or importing questions 
uh, from uh, any one of the events that have previously uh, occurred. So here maybe uh, when I was in the report function, uh, not many people uh, got the right answer to where is Colombia located on this map. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import this question into my asynchronous questionnaire and then press on save and publish now. And my students will be able to now answer this question uh, at their own rhythm, at their own pace uh, by just clicking on this link, this unique link. So uh, if you want to try that out for yourselves, uh, I will send you a uh, link in the chat. And now you can answer uh, this uh, question at your own rhythm. And uh, once I receive the answers, uh, all the answers will be visible here in the report function. So I can see already three people have answered here. And I see that in the report function. And uh, also keep in mind that you can also add files uh, to, uh, to this uh, that you can share uh, with any students. And I will check again if there are any questions that might've been a bit quick over there. Looks like we're good. I can show you some uh, other possibilities. Uh, possibilities. Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have uh, in the, the questions tab or also in the in the chat. Now I'll keep a, keep an eye on it. Um, I'm also going to um, make uh, asynchronous questionnaire available to you, so that you can give me any feedback that you might have, uh, and it'll have some uh, also some uh, some resources on it. Uh, that you can, uh, to get started with the tool. So let me just share the link to that. Here you go. If you want to give me any feedback uh, that you might have, uh, you can do it on the link that I've just posted. And uh, otherwise I'll give you a, give an overview of some other uh, functionalities, but the idea is also to keep uh, this uh, initial session quite uh, simple and stay in you know, like the basic features because the idea is that you don't come away from it with uh, too much information uh, discouraged. Uh, and hopefully uh, yeah, you're, you're wanting to use the tool and uh, insert it into your next, uh, next presentations. Uh, but yeah, of course, when you're getting started, uh, it can be helpful to see different uses of WooClap. And uh, we have this new examples gallery that you can see here. So if I click on examples gallery here, I can see uh, different uses of WooClap in different contexts. I can choose the language here. Uh, I can then choose the topic. So if I want to see how WooClap is used uh, in economy and management, and maybe uh, using a uh, find on image question, for example, I can filter all of that. And then I can preview the question and then import it into my events if I wish to. So it's a good source of inspiration when you're getting started, just to see maybe how uh, WooClap can be applied to your different sectors, your different uh, you know, domains of speciality. Um, and of course, uh, any of the questions that you're using in your event, you can also import them from a previously created event of yours. Uh, now, of course, as well, uh, maybe you'll be working uh, with, uh, with colleagues uh, on uh, creating uh, you know, similar content. And uh, there are various different sharing options that are available to you. Uh, now, one of the sharing options, uh, all of them can be found, sorry, beside the link here in the share button. So if I click on this button here, you can see various different options available. So I can share this event with its code. So to do this, if I activate this option here, I'm going to copy this unique uh, the unique code of my event and then send it to my colleague. So once I've copied the unique link, so this is this sequence of letters here is a unique link uh, to my event and I've activated the share event with its code option, uh, I send it to my colleague. Now let's imagine that I'm the colleague and I've just received uh, this, this, uh, this code. Uh, before, beside the create event button, there's an import event button. So if I press on this here, I can just paste the code that my colleague sent me. And what that's gonna do is give me the possibility to create a copy of his event. So it's gonna be 
uh, independent copy. So anything I do on this event won't have any uh, any effect on on his uh, on his end. But it's an identical copy of all the questions he's created, uh, the slides he's imported, and all the features that he's activated or uh, or not. So that is your first uh, sharing option. Uh, and now the second option that you can see uh, again by pressing on the share button is the collaborators uh, option. So here you have the possibility to add collaborators to an event, which means by just adding the email address of the person you wanna have collaborate on your event, uh, he's gonna receive an email with a link. And by clicking on that link, he'll be able to simultaneously work on a uh, event with you. So you'll be able to, at the same time, create content, present uh, content, and work on it at the same time. So really as collaborators on an event. Perfect. Uh, now I'm just checking if there are any questions. Can you show a uh, team mode, I see? Uh, so yes, this uh, indeed uh, is a uh, team mode. Now that is uh, pretty new to, to WooClap. Let me just return to my previous event because I think some people are still connected to it. Perfect. So uh, these were like the basic settings uh, and I see some of you already have uh, an appetite for, the, for more settings. So uh, I'll, I'll get into the, uh, the team mode. Uh, but uh, yeah, in the competition mode, uh, there is the possibility to give um, also students to, to the possibility to participate as a team on different questions. So to do that, I'm going to go into more settings here. And you can see I have the possibility to activate team mode. So this allows participants to answer questions as a team. So to do this, I'm just going to click on this button here. And I have team one and team two. I can name these as I want. And once I've activated this, when my students uh, connect to the event, they'll be given the choice of joining team one or two. And each team will have the possibility to answer uh, once for each question. Hope that makes sense. If you want to try it out, we can also do that. Don't hesitate if you have uh, any other questions. I'm looking in the question tab. It looks like there were quite a few. Uh, looks like we've answered most of them. Uh, Chris or Juslan, yeah, any any other questions you think uh, might be interesting, or do you think we've covered it uh, pretty much? Yeah, Kieran. Uh, no, I think we're pretty much good. Um, okay. Thanks for showing us the uh, the team mode. Gladly. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, and again, don't hesitate to give me uh, any feedback you might have uh, on uh, on the training session on that link uh, that I shared with you. And I'll share it one more time in case. This link, you can uh, share any feedback that you might have. And uh, yeah, hopefully you came, uh, came away from this wanting to, to use the tool and uh, yeah, insert some interactivity in, into your next uh, presentations or, or classes. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for, for your participation, for being here. Uh, I see one last question actually. Oh no, maybe not. Perfect. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Glad we could uh, we could help, Mary. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you everyone for uh, for taking the time to to be with us today, and uh, hopefully uh, be seeing you soon. Thank you. Thank you, have a great rest of the day.
thanks again to uh, Christopher, my my colleague, and Andrus, and also for the help in the in the chat and answering all your questions.